Yeah, but why didn't he just tell you? Why does he have to tell you before they came together? Could is it possible, right, that a husband and wife who are married and having children, that at some point in the generation of those children, God decides to intervene by the power of the Holy Spirit and cause the wife of that man to conceive by the power of the Holy Spirit? It's possible, right? Now, if I were to tell you that that happened, let's say uh, uh, in a family, in a particular family, there were uh, three boys, and the fourth boy, though, was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. What would you say? You would say that her, that doesn't mean that his mother is ever virgin, though, probably. Right. That's true. That's true. Or maybe. The issue is, the issue, uh, has, is something that has to do with the ancient understanding of biology and that our modern understanding of biology and genetics. In the ancient world, if a man and a, and a woman had relations, the offspring, of course, was the descendant of the man, right? But if this woman, before she gave birth, was raped or committed adultery or had relations in any way with another man after she had conceived, okay? let's say she's three months pregnant, if she has any relations with another man, there were two theories about the descendancy. The child born would either be the son of the second man or a mixture of the two. What? Why would they think that? Well, why do we think otherwise? Because we have modern genetics and we know and we've had a lot of medical study, right, since then. But in the ancient world, the first century, if a woman was pregnant and she had relations with another man, what are the case? Rape or adultery while pregnant. The child born would either be a mixture of the two, or what they called supersession, this child or the seed of the second man. Okay? Now, he tells you this right here, that it was before they came together. So there's no possible question in your mind that this child that will be born is what we would call, this, where God intervenes here as the second impregnator or the second cause of conception, all right? So that there's no possible way that Joseph could be the father of Jesus on the theory of the mixture, right? Supersessionists would say, okay, fine, God's the father, no problem. But many would say at that time, they were debating the theory, many would say, no, the child born is a mixture of Joseph and God. Okay? Now, then he goes on, he says, She was found to be a child of the Holy Spirit, her husband Joseph, being a just man and willing to put her to shame, resolved to send her away quietly. Now, why does it say a just man and willing to put her to shame and resolved to send her away quietly? What is Joseph thinking? Mm -hmm. What's going on in his head? Breaking it off and... Yeah, but they're betrothed. Right. What has happened? What has Mary done? There are two options. Either Mary has committed what would be adultery, right? She's already betrothed. So she's either, or she's either committed adultery or she's telling the truth. Now, if Joseph believes, the word, the word here in Greek, it says he is a righteous man, right? A just man in the Greek, dikaiosune, righteousness. Dikaios, a righteous man. That's a technical term in the Greek of the Jewish world. That means he keeps the law of Moses perfectly. It doesn't mean he's a nice guy. It means he keeps the law of Moses perfectly, which would lead to be a nice guy too. But we, most people hear that he was a just man. He was a nice guy. And he didn't want to submit her to public shame. <laughs> what happens if you commit adultery? You're stoned, right? Joseph is caught in a difficult situation here. He's betrothed to a woman who is now conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. And if he is a just man, according to the law, she must be stoned. But he doesn't believe she has committed adultery. So what you see here is Joseph's faith, his belief in Mary's words that what she is saying is true. And that's why Matthew tells you he was a just man. He keeps the law perfectly. Otherwise, you might think, well, he's a little soft and he's going to let her go. Right? 
So he believes, most likely from the text here, that Mary actually is telling the truth. Okay? Alright, then. He resolved to send her away quietly. Why would he want to resolve, why would he send her away? Because the people would stone her. Well, there might be some people wanting to stone her, but couldn't he go off and hide with her? You got a problem. Who was the father of this child? Who's technically married to her by law? Joseph. Joseph. Right? Joseph's betrothed, but God is the author of the law. Who is the husband of this woman? So Joseph is thinking about the Torah, the law. In the Old Testament, if a man rapes a woman, he is obligated to marry her if she's not yet married. Okay? This is strange for us today. He goes to the father of the woman, and he says to the father of the woman that he raped, um, he says, I'm sorry I did this, you know, and uh, therefore here's, you know, 100 bucks. And then he marries the girl. Okay? So to cause a woman to conceive and to marry is intimately related. So Joseph is wrestling with this. What do I do? And then God sends an angel, a messenger, Angelos, to give him clarity on the issue. He says to him, look at these words. But as he considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David. Well, Matthew couldn't even keep the genealogy straight. Who's the father of Joseph? Yeah. Jacob. What's he? Why does he call him Joseph the father of Jacob? Because Joseph's role in the story is that he is a son of David. If Joseph disappears, we have a massive problem with salvation history here. He must be a descendant of David to fulfill 2 Samuel 7. If Joseph disappears, he can't adopt Jesus as his son and name him. Jesus is going to be the adopted son of David, but the eternal son of God. Right? Solomon was the adopted son of God, the natural son of David. Right? Was he also by blood the son of David? By Great mystery. The descendancy of Mary is unknown. Every passage that people usually use to try and say, well, Mary was a Levite. She was a Jew. Every one of them. None of them tell you exactly what she is. You can't tell. You can guess, but you can't tell. But didn't they always marry within their tribe? No. There was no obligation to marry within their tribe, and often they didn't. Really? Yeah. 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 And so let's finish with this. Look at this. In verse... Um, uh, Son of David. So Joseph, son of David, hint, hint. Joseph, you can't bail out of this situation. You must remain here to fulfill 2 Samuel 7. You are intimately related to this story, Joseph. You have been chosen for a reason. So he says, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call him. That's adoption. The, the father of the house, the Jewish custom, adopted a boy by naming him. You shall call him Jesus, Yeshua. What does Yeshua mean? Yehoshua, Yahweh saves. What does God save his people from back in the Old Testament? He ruled over them as king and saved them from their enemies round about, right? Look what it says here. For he will save them from their enemies round about. No, he will save his people from their sins, which is the real enemy that they're not receiving. They think the Roman soldier on the street corner is the problem. No, the real problem is the demon behind him. It's the sin in the land which is causing the problem. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. That is, God is with us, Isaiah's prophecy. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, and he knew her not, look at this, until she conceived her firstborn son. Why does he say that? Because of that issue we talked about, mix or supersession. <clears throat> she, he had no relation with her until she conceived that boy. Because, and Matthew tells you that, because of that same issue. Some would say, did they have relations before the child was born? No. Okay, clear. Therefore you know the child born is not a mixture of God and Joseph. Right? It's on both ends here. If he had relations with her before she conceived the Holy Spirit, 
possibly mixed. If he had relations with her after she conceived, but before he was born, either supersession or mix. And so therefore the child born is a natural son of God, but adopted son of David. Okay? And the hellos or until here, this is just in English, just lots of words on this. Sometimes people hear this until, and they, what sounds like therefore afterwards they have relations. In English, we never use the word until in modern English in this way in modern English. We tend to use until to mean a change of action. I did not eat until I was hungry, therefore I ate, right? I didn't run until I saw the lion, then you ran, right? She, he had no relations until she gave, he gave, she gave birth. Well, therefore, maybe they had relations. Well, in older English, you'll still hear it on occasion, and an, an educated individual will say something like this. The pilgrims and the Indians ate turkey on the first Thanksgiving. And we have this custom in America until today. You'll still hear that construction. It's an older construction. You don't hear it so much. And that's why people must read this text. The real question is, what is the Greek word here? Heos. And heos in Greek has, can be read either way. And by context, it tells you the meaning. I'll give you two examples of it. Heos. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 25. Uh, and Michal, the daughter of Saul, had no children until the day of her death. Really? Well, you better dig her up. What's down there in the, in the tomb? So, had no children until, until the day of her death. Obviously, that means she had no children until the day of her death, and obviously that continued, <laughs> right? Sit at my right hand, Psalm 110, verse 1, until, hetos in the Greek, until I make your enemies your footstool. And does that mean after the foot, they're made the footstool, you can no longer sit at my hand? No. Okay? So, that's the use of the word hetos in the Greek. It has a wider range than our modern English until. All right? And now, my lips. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to say thank you to Sebastian. It was very powerful. And maybe really next, uh, next Wednesday, I'm not here, but the Bible studies will fall. Don't worry. Uh, that means you will have the Bible studies in the same time like today, without even liturgy, because I'm down in Phoenix. Oh, that's right, for the retreat. Okay. And I will like invite you uh, upstairs to for the delivery.